Hello, everybody. Welcome to Collab Investments. Let's continue to talk about buffered ETF. So last time we talked about one type of buffered ETF where there is a 100% downside protection and 10% upside protection. This time, let's talk about another buffered ETF. I will use BAPR as an example, where it has 9% downside protection and a much higher cap, which is 18% uh, in a year. So basically, when you buy this ETF, if the S&P 500 index drops up to 9%, you don't have any loss. And if it drops beyond 9%, then you start having losses. For example, if it drops 19%, your portfolio will drop 90 minus nine, which is 10%. But if stock rises, you gain, and you gain up to 18.3%. So you count this in a year. Let's look at how we can achieve this buffered ETF by ourselves. If you look at the profit loss figure, assume Today's stock price is 100, and uh, as it goes up higher and higher, we get a uh, higher gain, but it will be capped at 18%. And then if stock goes lower, it will stay flat until at 9% point, then it start dropping. If you look at the picture to the right, it's very similar to the buffered ETF that we looked at the last time. And it's actually a vertical spread. And on the left side, this picture, which has unlimited loss and a limited gain. So it is either naked put or covered call. So I'll just use naked put. And this ETF called BAPR means April. So it's uh, 2024 April, and uh, it will mature in a year, which is 2025 April. So let's try to DIY and see what kind of price we can get. I will pick the closest uh, expiration date, which is end of March. So a year from there is uh, this year's uh, March 31st. I'll use the price data of that date. And then the S&P 500 or SPY is uh, 523.07. And then 9% lower is very close to the strike price, 475. And the higher strike, which is a cap, is 80.3% higher, $618. And I will use the strike price, 620, which actually give you a little higher cap. Okay, so now let's look at the price and uh, what kind of put and call we need to use. Assume we open the position at the end of March this year. And then we pick the option expiration date, which is a year from now. And we will use our calculated price based on the SP by price. So The call at this price is $44.78. That's the call expire a year from uh, March 31st, 2024. And the 9% lower strike is 475 and the put price is $12.77. And the higher camp which is uh, 618, let's use 620. The call price is 5.78. So you may wonder, how did I get this price? Okay, so uh, I have an account in Thinkorswim, which was recently acquired by Charles Swap. So I'll just use their software. Let me show you. Okay, so this is a Thinkorswim software. If you go to Analyze and then click Think Bank, it allow you to show 
option price of a previous date. And uh, I'll go here and pick the date. So I pick this date, which is actually a Sunday. Please, okay, it will use the last Friday's or Thursday in the price. It's okay. So Sunday's price, and we said it's 523. If we want to look at uh, the option uh, price for the a year from that day, it's uh, March 31st, 25. And then let's go to the closest uh, call price, 523. So this is a March 31st, 25. And uh, 523, look at here, we got the exact date, 523. And uh, this is, a, the bid price is 44.24, and ask price is 45.39. So you just click it. So once you click, it opens up a tree. And in that tree, it shows you the middle price, which is 44.78. So this is the price I use in the slides. 4478. Okay, so similarly for the 475 put, let's go back. Put is on the right side. So 475. Okay, let's click it. The price is $12.77. $12.77. $12.77. And uh, similarly, you can get the call price for 620, which is 18% above. So this is how we get all these prices. And in order to create the same profit loss picture, we need to buy the at the money call, 523 call, and sell the higher call, 620. So this becomes the right side, the bull vertical spread. And then on the left side, we need to make the put. So we need to sell 475 put. So overall, you still need to pay $26 out of pocket. Okay. Now let's look at the overall. So how do we do that? We already know that we need to buy 523 call, sell 620 call for the vertical spread and sell 475 put. And the total cost is $26.23. Assume you have $1 million account. If you divide that by SP by price, it's equivalent to about 1,900 shares, which is about 19 contracts. So this means you need to spend about $50,000 to buy this vertical spread and sell the make the put. And then after you spend that, you get around $950,000 as cash. And of course, you don't use it as cash. You use it to buy treasury note. And so one year yield of treasury note on that day is 5.03. So this means you can generate almost 50K interest and the max loss you can get when SPY drops less than 9% is all those money, basically the interest minus your out of pocket, which is a very small amount, minus 0 0.2, close to zero. And the max gain you would get is the higher strike minus the current strike times the contracts. And then finally, minus the out of pocket. Okay, the money you get. So this is exactly 18.3%. So we have correctly reproduced this uh, buffered ETF just using the standard options. So for the interest, you if you buy treasury note, you have to pay very high tax amount, which is not good. So alternatively, instead of buying treasury note, you could buy a box. So remember, if you want to borrow money, you sell a short box. But if you want to 
get interest from your cash, you could buy box. And uh, if you buy box, the interest rate is about the same as treasury, maybe a little bit higher because you have a little bit higher risk. The clearing house has to secure those money, which has a little higher risk than the US government. So the interest rate might be a little higher. And also those interests will be completely capital gain, which has tax benefit because it can offset the tax loss of the other part of your portfolio. So in the last talk, when I talk about the other Buffett ETF, for the interest part, you could also buy a box instead of using treasury note. Okay, so this is how you can reproduce a buffered ETF yourself. And should you do it by yourself? There's pros and cons. The pros is you don't need to pay for the uh, management fee, which is more than half percent. But the cons is it's less flexible and it's easy to make mistakes by doing that. And you need lots of money to accurately reproduce the exact portfolio of the buffer ETF. But anyways, the principle is the same. If you think the read and the protection offered by the buffer ETF is good enough for you, you can go buy it because you don't have to have a million dollars to buy that. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.